everyone. This is Marina with How I Got Here. And today we have a very special guest, Devante Saunders. Did I say your last name correctly? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Perfect. Thank you. And of course, my soul tribe, Erica Janelle. We I don't do Hello. I don't do a lot of things without you because I love you around me. <laughs> <laughs> um so Devante, thank you so much for joining me. Um we literally spoke yesterday and I saw your video on TikTok yesterday. And as soon as I sent it to everybody else, everybody was like, uh, yeah, we, we can't see his video because it was taken down. So we know yeah. your information that you're about to share is actually very vital to, to our society. Um, so a little bit about you is that you're a credit specialist. You are a realtor and also a newly licensed herbalist. So we yeah, love all that. You're basically yeah, just vibing on the right vibrations that we all need to have around. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say thank you. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for inviting me on here. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's always bliss. It's always bliss to, you know, collab and network with other like minded individuals. So this is this is a blessing for me. Thank you. No, listen, we're we're very happy to have you here. Um, Erica. <laughs> yes. Don't, don't be quiet over there. <laughs> <laughs> she knows I'm never quiet. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I am definitely um, not a, not ashamed or afraid to speak, um, but I'm really literally sitting here wanting to learn um, as a person that um, I actually went through a process of repairing my own credit a few years ago. Now I need to go back and do it again because I kind of had some situations happen that kind of took me backwards. So I'm ready to hear all the wisdom, all the knowledge. I'm a student today, so I'm, okay. I'm, I will ask questions as they arise, but I'm here to learn. Okay. Okay. Most definitely. Most definitely. Would you Would you like me to talk about the video a little bit? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. So we'll break down that for the audience real quickly, um, because I did post a video yesterday, which brought you guys into my live stream, and um, uh, it was taken down quite, quite, quite uh, quickly. Fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I got it back. I did appeal it, so I believe it's still up. It's back up. It is. I so, saved it. Um, yeah, I did too. Thank you. Saved that. And I, was, I did too, because that was my first time hearing it this morning, because it was down. So Yeah, so I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So uh, just a little bit, basically, about the video, what was going on is um, we're getting to a point where, as a as a collective, as a, as a whole uh, state, nation, or however you want to break it up, we are becoming aware of certain certain uh manipulations that we've been playing a part to unknowingly so um part of that is uh you know of course for starters everybody knows that you know the government's been trickery and you know some things they hold some information that you know and one one quote that i like is he who controls the printed page controls the thinking of the age so a lot of a lot of us have a lot of us haven't been able to think for ourselves because the printed page has already been printed for us. So we've just been living this systematic approach to what we think is life. So my video on TikTok was briefly just going over um, a, a deeper insight of just how manipulating, manipulative the government has been. Um, we have known that for a while, but we didn't know exactly how. Uh, and now we're figuring out exactly how we're seeing their their blueprint from the inside out. And now what I'm doing is trying to collect other individuals who have been, uh, you know, what I'm saying trying to take an advantage of during, for lack of a better word, during this lifetime and giving them this knowledge, because this knowledge is stuff that hasn't been really portrayed or, or, or broadcast to the public. So. I want to help individuals not only take control of what their life really could be, but I want to show them what all of the, all the what life really is. You know what I'm saying? So the video is basically just going over a few things, breaking down the government and how they control and manipulate manipulate us, and then some steps that we can begin to start taking to take out to take that ownership back because we have to realize that we do have the opportunity and the permission to or the right to govern ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I think you said something very key. I think a lot of people don't realize that they're being manipulated. And I think mm -hmm. the first step is to actually understand that manipulation. So can you kind of go into a little bit more detail about some of that manipulation, that, that systemic 
mindset that we have been taught or it's been embedded in us that we need to kind of reprogram ourselves over? Of course, of course. And luckily I did bring my books today. So we'll go over these bad boys as well. Yes. So, but to, to give you a, so you were right, 100%. Um, I don't know the math, but I would say probably at least a good 85 to 90% of America doesn't know that they're being played with and they're pawns on a greater scale of a chess game that they have no clue about. So, uh, and, it, and, and when I figured out this information, I really, I really started to laugh and I, I clapped. I gave, I gave America a, a, a right. hand clap because <laughs> they have done, the, the powers that be have done a great job Yes, <laughs> like keeping this thing under the rug, exactly. but it is no longer. It can't do it no more. So it all starts, so to speak, and we'll go over the books here shortly. But I need people to understand because these books will help help people grasp that um, and and see it clearly as day. So it's not just one talking about, oh, girl, uh, my job ain't ain't let me get my day off. You know, you know, they don't care about me. This is it's more than you not getting a day off at work because they don't care about what you got going on at home. I just had a lady, uh, one of my uh, credit clients just get denied a day off of work and she can't even go to her son's orientation for college. He's the first person to go to college in their family. And she can't even wow. go to orientation because her job said no. So I, I need people to understand that this corporate world has nothing to give to you of value okay they they suck every they suck all the life out of you and yes. they if it's not about their corporation <laughs> if it's not about their business if it's not about what's coming in their assets mm -hmm. they can do they can exactly. do without you, okay and that goes from the little the little people bagging the groceries at kroger all the way up to the ceos of the uh international airlines they're all <laughs> the same <laughs> they're oh all the same. yes indeed <laughs> I have experienced it recently, so you're just you're, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So it's definitely uh, it's a problem that we need to understand. But it, it, it's something that really begins before that we before we even have the opportunity to think for ourselves, and it goes back into childhood. So the 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 program, the systematic approach to a way of living is it goes all the way back to childhood because as you are, as you are a adolescent or a child growing up in the household first you got to realize the adults that are teaching you are, are probably already emotion. living that program, mm -hmm. systematic life so mm -hmm. you really from a from an inf, from a baby from a child you really can't even start to think for yourself anyway so you grow up into this systematic approach, not even really knowing it. But it starts as a kid. They they take you as a kid, and the first place a lot of a lot of kids go, a lot of people go is church. That's mm -hmm. the first place they, they go. So or the go, synagogue. You grow up, yeah. In her, in her instance, yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you grow up. You go into church with your parents, with your grandparents, and things like that. And you're you that's the. That's part of their program, and that will explain as we get down the line. But that's pro. That's program number. Well, first, no, we'll 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 back it up later. But that's program number one. That's institution number one. Then they transition you into what they call school, and they try to make that very important. But I have my views on the on uh, my own views on the educational program. I don't mm -hmm. believe that we need it because everything that you, if once you grow up and you realize a lot of this stuff, you realize a lot of what you actually learn, a lot of what's actually retainable and useful in everyday life, you're going to learn outside of the classroom. Yes. You're going to learn with interacting with the same people that raised you, with your peers, with your friends, with your family, with your older adults, asking questions, uh, lessons, uh, going through lessons, trials and tribulations. That's how you really learn stuff. Right. So they put us through this systematic approach of school saying that we need their form of education education to be successful but it's only to be successful in their form of life okay mm -hmm. so then from the education it goes if you if you if you're successful with the educational program you're probably going to go into college which is the higher education okay but if you if you don't go there you're probably just going to first thing you do is going to go out and get a nine to five <laughs> job okay but even whether you go whether you don't go to college or you do go to college the end goal is always going to be the same you're going to end up working for somebody or without yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you will never I, have enough money for anything, period. <laughs> and that goes deep, it's, too. It's the swindle. It's the game. It's, it's the, the swindle. swindle. And you will never have enough money because that goes deep, too. Because the, once we realize and understand that the, 
the uh, the capital bank system, the capital banking system will never print enough money for the average American to really get right. out of debt. They mm -hmm. only print enough money to have it in circulation so that you know they can keep this this game and this thing it's swimming. Slow. Going. Yeah. Okay, but even we're gonna get to the money. That's it's not even it's, it's not even. <laughs> Valuable. We are the same page. I already know where you're yeah, going. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even valuable. So yeah. that's a little. That's a little bit about how they first the, the program starts from from childhood, and mm -hmm. gradually have to go through those steps. And one of the things that uh, a lot of us people who think outside the box end up realizing when we get to this age or this this chapter in life is that we've always asked questions outside of the box or against the grain yes and we were the problematic children you know <laughs> we were the yeah. why you ask so many questions just so, because i said yeah, so right here exactly <laughs> exactly but that is the problem today people do not ask questions right they just take what they hear and they run with it and they don't understand mm -hmm. that that's a part of programming that's a part of the systematic way of life that's what they want you to do they don't want you to ask questions OK, because they want you they rather have you not knowing than knowing and challenging because mm -hmm. who wants to be the rebellious child. Right. Exactly. The well, there's there's value in control when you can use a person's ignorance against them. Oh, yeah. So yeah. your ignorance is value to them. They yeah. want you to be ignorant. And when I say ignorant, I mean lacking knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Yeah. Definition of ignorance. They want you to lack the knowledge because then. They can keep that systemic control over how everything flows. And it's a never ending hamster wheel that you're on. You're, you're constantly on this hamster wheel and you're going nowhere. <laughs> but what they, what they got to realize with that is, too, they tell you the group, they tell you the because, uh, you know, opposite is it's a negative it's negative and opposite. So they tell you they tell you the opposite to that. They say ignorance is no defense. So if they're trying to keep you ignorant and then they're telling you ignorance is no defense, why would you still want to exactly. remain in that ignorant state? Exactly. Because you, as soon as you come across something that's challenging or something that you may not really understand or understand, now you you saying you don't know, but that's that's no defense. You should have looked it up. You have the we have yeah, the have resources. We have the resources. We have the people and the knowledge. We have the the platforms to share this type of information. Absolutely. So there's no point. Like now, ignorance is a choice. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. No excuse for ignorance anymore. Absolutely. With all that social media and TikTok is the new media right now. Oh yeah. It's like it's the news. It's the like everything I learn about anything is on TikTok. Like, I know. She's like, you gotta get on TikTok. I'm like, but my kids are on TikTok. Who wants to be on TikTok? <laughs> but <laughs> and I'm yeah. not a big news person anyway. I really can't stand the news. It's Indeed. so negative. Like I don't yeah. like all that negativity. I am a researcher though. So if there's anything that I don't know, oh, I'm going to learn. Am, am I not Marina? Yes. She's in that laptop yeah. while I'm she's sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I agree with you with the news. Um, I, I would I would vow to tell people to you know cut the news out because that's yeah. what the news is there for. The news mm -hmm. is to help the help the masses or the powers that be. Yeah, pump that fear into you. Mm -hmm. You want to keep you fearful and think you need them and you need their government, you need their armies and things like that for defense. But all the while, they really out there being big bullies and yes, you know, <laughs> these break it down. They're they're being real big bullies out there. We don't. They're not defending us. They're defending the powers that be of, of their manipulation. Because once the people actually find out, it's going to be a problem. Well, be when when you get the knowledge, then you when you know better, you do better. Or at least you yeah. should. Well, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. I was like, at least you should. Yeah. You know, well, people like us that are not afraid, that will stand up for what's right and will walk in integrity and will walk in honor. We have the platforms. We can use our TikToks and our YouTubes and our uh, Instagrams to spread the word. Now, just like God won't force you to choose him, he puts a choice before you. It's a, it's a choice whether or not you use the knowledge to your advantage or you just let it sit there and be knowledge that's wasted. But we need these types of platform and people like you on, on our channels to help spread this news because we'll do our part to spread the message. Now, what people do with it after we spread it, that's up to them. Of but course. we can be the pioneers. I feel like the three of us on this on this podcast or on this YouTube can make a difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, we yeah. can reach the masses. Oh, yeah. You know? and, and, I, and, I, and I wholeheartedly believe that. 
Uh, over, yeah. over 100%. And I, and I want to say real, I want to pause real quick and just speak to the audience, anybody watching this real quickly, because what you was just saying about speaking out, a lot of us, and I, because I, I had a problem with this when I first started, because I was trying to uphold this image, this professional image. A lot of us are afraid to speak out, afraid to let the truth be known because we're afraid to hurt our business image. Mm -hmm. And I have to just, I have to speak life into somebody right now and let right. you know, disregard your business image because the real will recognize the real. You can't, mm -hmm. I've got more business being real than I did when I was fake and flawed and trying to be Mr. White Collar. You know right. what I'm saying? Once I really, I, cause and I felt that because I would put out my content and it really wouldn't be me. Exactly. But it would be I'm trying to portray myself as this image, as this businessman, professional, not knowing that professionalism is growing every day. And to me now, it's just about being real and authentic. authentic. You can't be real and authentic with your audience. You do not need them. So anybody out there struggling with that, with that, because I was getting this information. I had it. I had it all. I had stuff I had to say way earlier than when I started to say stuff. Right. But I, I refuse. I bit my tongue so much because I refused to to destroy my business image. But now I tell you, I'm I'm glad I, I let I let that cat out the bag. The right people are always gonna come, just exactly. like yeah. here today. So it doesn't. You see how it happened. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> you see how it happened. So I'm not even complaining no more. It's all good. Yes, I love it. <laughs> okay, so what's the message? What do you want? All right, so I'm going to just jump into these books really quickly. Yes, uh, yes. I'm going to put, put people up on game a little bit. I'm not going to go too too deep into them, but I just want to give people the titles. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll tell you a little bit about what's in each of them. Mm -hmm. Now, these three books, um, I recommend to anybody because if you want to get up to speed and you want to get up to speed pretty quickly, these books are slap every like, oh, if they're small. They're no less than I mean, they're no more than like 80 pages a piece, but and they're less than five dollars. Yes. Five dollars a piece on Amazon. So I'm going to go over the titles and everything. So don't worry. Okay. But these books will put you up so quickly on the schemes, on, on, on how the government works, on how the court system works, how you can start rebut because it will show you why bills and uh mortgages and contracts and anything that you're dealing with with that, that deals with the exchange of the federal reserve note is already paid in full it goes over a lot of that type of criteria in detail so this is what i'll give to y'all today and we'll simply start with the first one that i think people should get which is the meet your straw man so i'll hold it up right here really quickly meet okay. your straw man okay this one right here is uh the the, the starters this mm -hmm. is what everybody starts with, okay? Me just, this is what the whole book looks like. Mm -hmm. Not even that big, okay? But the Meet Your Straw Man will basically go over uh, just how bad, <laughs> just how manipulate, manipulative the government has been. And it'll show you how they do that. So the number one thing in here is getting to know your straw man. What people need to know about their straw man is, is that almost every everyone in America has one. If you have went to school in America, then you have a straw man. If you have uh, had a birth certificate, if you have a birth certificate registered with the United States of America, you will have a straw man. And we'll tell you exactly how that works. So it all starts once your parents gave, you know, they had the best, one of the best days of their life. You know what I'm saying? Giving birth to you, their baby girl, their baby boy, whatever you want to call yourself, right? Mm -hmm. They gave birth to you and you, it, was, it was a joyous package. Then, they, 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 upon your birth, you get a uh, certificate of live birth, mm -hmm. which basically simply states that we had, a, ba a baby was born here today and it was born alive. Simple as that. But what then happens is your parents will then be manipulated or think they have to apply because we have to stay up to date with these words. They are applying for a birth certificate. Right. So that's the application. That's like going to McDonald's and saying, do you have a job? Can I get an application? Yeah. I would like to apply to be a, a, a employee here. So upon the application of your birth certificate, what we don't understand is that is a contract that is signed 
But unbeknownst to us, with all without uh everything, without the whole agreement being exposed, we don't know what that contract comes with. So upon the application of your birth certificate, there's a couple things that happen. And I'll go through the book to show you these. So the first thing is your parents lose ownership of you. Okay. And wow. they yeah. And they allow a straw man to be created because upon the application of your birth certificate, you are now being incorporated through the United States. So first you got to realize that United States is a United States corporation, Mm -hmm. a for-profit company. And you can look that up on Dun and Bradstreet. Mm -hmm. So upon the application of a birth certificate, which is given to you through the state, which means you are now incorporated through the state on paper. So the straw man in simple terms is what they call a fictitious legal entity. It's a fictitious piece of paper that they they use legalese, which is, I'll get into that. And they, they, for, they trick you or us into believing that we are this quote unquote straw man, which we are not, okay? Mm-hmm. So to elaborate on straw man, because people are like, well, what exactly is it? It's created upon a birth certificate. It is your birth certificate. The name on your birth certificate does not belong to you. Mm. The name on your birth certificate belongs to your straw man. It is incorporated. It is on paper. You are. It is legal, fictitious entity. Okay, legal fiction. Just like any other corporation, they're all legal fiction. And we're digging. If this stuff goes deep, but I'm just going to give y'all the basics. Feel free to tap in with us some other time. We can actually dig into a lot of this stuff. Right. But basically, you just got to know that this, they, they basically copy you onto a piece of paper. And now you're legal fiction. And this is how they start to control and manipulate us. So the first the first part of, uh, of understanding this straw man is you have to realize that you are human and that you are not this legal fictitious piece of paper. And with that being said, the books will show you what a lot of uh, what actually governs you, the human. So if I ask the audience, so I, if I ask you all how many laws you thought we had, it would be, oh, man, I can't even think. You know, I don't know. Right. But simply is I would say we only had three. So to, to understand that, you would have to understand that you are human and you are not legal fiction. Okay, and the human you, this is when you get into the all humans are born equal and free with with the right to right and liberty to do as they please or whatever, as long as they don't infringe on the life, the liberty or the property of someone else. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's when you get into that living free thing. But to understand this, you got to know that you are governed by common law as a human being. Mm-hmm. All the other statutes and laws that they have created are optional for us, the human being, but they are not optional for our fictitious legal straw man or legal personality that, that, that has been incorporated through the United States of America. So upon the incorporation of your straw man, you are you, you are then awarded because this is because I want to go into real quickly how bills and things like that are paid. And I'll show you this in the book because people want to be shown a lot of this stuff. But upon the uh, upon the application of your birth certificate, I mean, your birth certificate, you have a straw man. And this may be too small, Mm -hmm. but I have it highlighted right here that your straw man is basically awarded close to a million dollars, possibly a million dollars upon the creation of that straw man. Right. And they play with that million dollars or possibly million dollars on the stock market your whole life. OK, so when you're going into these places and these institutions and you're filling out these contracts and you're signing for this, this stuff, what you're really doing is authorizing any corporation or any company creditor to basically go into your, your straw man's state owned trust account and pull in any residual funds from that trust account. So I just told you they award you close to a million dollars. This is this is in a state issue trust account because it's in court. You're incorporated through the state. Right. Through the state. Easy. Exactly. So in understanding that you are to, to, on how to separate yourself from this straw man, you have to understand that you are the beneficiary of this straw man and that the state is the trustee. OK, 
So mm-hmm. that's the difference. That's how you can start to manipulate this straw man. You have to realize that you are human and that you, first of all, the contract is really void because you, you entered into it unknowingly, unwillingly, and involuntarily. You didn't know. Okay. But moving along, a lot of all the, that's how all the bills and stuff are paid because you have this money sitting in a trust account that you don't know of. Okay. And every time you go into these uh, institutions, you sign that. The, the paper has no value until you put your signature on it because your signature comes with the value. Your signature approves the loan, approves the money, approves the fund. So basically, you can get any loan that you really ever apply for. But they, they, the reason why they deny you is maybe because you don't have the job to show the adequate income to actually right. pay that back. But honestly, they get all that money from up jump and you don't you don't have to pay it back. But they know that anyway. OK, so. That's what this book starts to go over, which is the meet your straw man. Basically, it goes over that whole the whole idea of the straw man, let you know just how bad they use it. It also goes over uh, a few encounters with uh, how to deal with the police in your straw man and things of that nature. And just the whole inside school of what you need to know to understand that they have created a personality that you basically that we have all been operating under a personality that is not us. We have all been committing identity fraud. They have been forcing us to commit identity fraud, identity theft. Okay, so that's this book. Now, when you get on to this one, this is the UCC connection, how to free yourself from legal tyranny. Okay. Oh, wow. This book, it it simply does what it says. It shows you a lot of different encounters of how to rebuttal and how to go back and forth with with officers of the law. Simple. Okay. It it goes from, uh, well, one thing I want to point out here, okay, is the without prejudice. Because what, what we have to understand is that we are human. Okay. And we have inalienable rights, but a lot of us don't know how to tap back into those inalienable rights. So when you're dealing with a lot of these contracts and a lot of these criminal offenses and things of that nature, when you sign these documents, first realize that in the court of law, your name in all caps signifies a corporation. Okay, so if you look at your driver's license, your name is in all caps. If you look at any court proceeding documents that you ever received, your name will be in all caps. Or with any preceding's, Mr., Mrs., mm-hmm. Gov, Dr., Rev, Sec, mm-hmm. all that stuff, that's not pertaining to your human self. And I'll give you an example using my name. My name is Devante of the Saunders family. Mm-hmm. I am not Mr. Saunders. I am not Mr. Devante. I am not Saunders, Mr. Devante. I am n- none, of the, none of the above. My name is Devante of the Saunders family. That is the my human self. Okay. Oh, wow. But how they try to get you on some of these documents is calling you Mr. Mr. Saunders or, or Miss Evans or whatever your last name may be. They try to get you by putting these at these abbreviations before your name, which is pertaining to your straw man. Little do you know, because they have you committing identity fraud. So a lot with a lot of these documents and things like that, once you understand that you are human and how you've been manipulated. You got to start using the uh, the phrase without prejudice, UCC 1-308. And I'll tell you simply what this means. So without prejudice, when you use without prejudice or without prejudice, UCC 1-308, in connection with your signature, you are saying, I reserve my right not to be compelled to perform under any contract or commercial agreement that I did not enter into knowingly, voluntarily, and intentionally. And I do not accept the liability of any compelled benefit or any uh, or any unrevealed contract or commercial agreement, and for for a lot of you, the compel the compelled benefit is using these these Federal Reserve notes. Okay, so if you go back to the straw man, it will also tell you about what money is. So th- that's why these these are really entertaining. You're gonna need these paper like copies. Right. Don't get voice books. Don't get uh, audios and stuff. Physical like book. Yeah, yeah. physical book and get you a couple of highlighters, because if I actually was able to show you these, these boys are highlighted up. OK, but once you realize, oh, what was I talking about then? Um, the, uh, the, oh, the, 
Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. the without prejudice. So once you understand that you are not this legal fiction, you start to separate yourself. They'll tell you about the money in the straw man book and how money is basically fake. And I and I'll go over that real quickly with you, with some of you that don't understand how money is fake because I know you can still use it for your bills, you can still use it for your gas, buying your groceries and things like that. But America's a bully, and I'm about to tell you how. So the money, if you go to the history of money, money used to be referred to as pound sterling silver. And yes, guys, it was literally a pound of sterling silver. Okay. But you can't walk around with these. Uh, all, all these pounds of, of, of silver in your pocket is wearing your jeans down. You're wearing yourself down. You can't really move around with too much of these pounds of silver. This stuff is heavy. So how, how banks first came into place, they allow people to go and put a safe place for them to, to, to hold their sterling silver in this bank, right? And they started to issue what they call bank notes, okay? So these bank notes were in representation of this, this legitimate for valuable, tangible sterling silver. So let's say now we can uh, do business with these banknotes instead of carrying around these big old blocks of silver. So now if I'm doing business with Mr. James down the street and I, j- I want to purchase some corn because my cornfield is, is down or whatever, I need some corn and Mr. James got corn. I go to Mr. James, Mr. James says, it'll cost two pounds of sterling silver for me to get some corn from him. I'll have my bank notes now. I don't have to give them two literal pounds of sterling silver. I got my bank notes. I just write or give them two pound worth of bank notes. And there we go, Mr. James. Let me get my corn. If Mr. James ever wants to go and cash in for his bank note, I mean, cash in his bank notes, he can just go down to the local bank, give in his bank notes. And what will he get in return? He will get legitimate, valuable, tangible sterling silver equivalent to whatever he's bringing, bringing in. That's how money used to work. Nowadays, money isn't backed by sterling silver or even gold. gold okay? yeah. Exactly. So, and, and then if you look in the Constitution, lawful money is gold or silver. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the Congress does not have, uh, they're not legally authorized to print paper money, but yet they still do it. Program, you smell it? Okay. So the money that we operate today, operate with today, it did have value once upon a time. Mm-hmm. Okay? It did. It was backed by gold up until this uh, up until 1971. It was backed by gold. It was the backed by gold at thirty five dollars per ounce. OK, what happened was America was in debt to other nations because, yep. yeah, we're operating with these bank notes and, you know, we're exchanging it for gold. But we didn't really have the gold equivalent to the bank notes that we had going out. So when these nations start to come back with all these bank notes. All these do- well, we call them dollar bills now, dollar dollar bills, y'all. Yeah, they're not worth anything. When they came back with all these dollar dollar bills to exchange it to, and for they for they gold, America didn't have enough, right? So what happened now is now we're in debt to these nations because we don't have enough gold. So Nixon, President Nixon, y'all can go back and look up his term. Mm-hmm. He took it upon himself to think he was going to be able to solve the issue. Right. And what did he do? He <laughs> temporarily, air quotes, temporarily disassociated the dollar with, from being backed by gold at $35 an ounce. So therefore, the gold had no, no tangible backings. So what did America do after that? We went to war with other nations. They called it World War One, Two, and all that other stuff, and yeah. tried to try to put. Up, that's why the news ain't good. They try to tell you why they go out there to these other nations because of mass weapons of destruction over here, or they gonna send missiles from over. All about the dollars. All about the dollar. Every mm-hmm. war that we've ever been in was all about moving the capitalist banking system into other nations' uh, ne- territories and forcing them to sell their goods for the American dollar. It's all in the books, ladies and gentlemen. Read it. So when to when I tell you today that the dollar isn't backed by anything besides oil, which isn't even our reserves, mind you, we bullied other nations to get them to sell their oil. Well, we forced them to yeah. sell their oil for the American dollar. And they dare not switch that up because we will come bomb, y'all. Okay? Don't get it messed up. So it's only backed by oil and us, the people. Yes. Now, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to say we're not valuable, but uh, there's no tangible, there's nothing tangible. 
saving the dollar. OK, so people have been programmed into thinking that the dollar is losing value. I'm here to correct you and tell you that the dollar has lost, lost. value already. <laughs> and it hasn't had value. No, before we were born, time. yeah. Yes. Quite some time. Right. OK, so that's the that's what we have to understand that we've been manipulated into working physically hard for this paper money that really has no value. It cannot promise any value in the future. OK, but these books are breaking down. So when you start using the, the without prejudice UCC 1-308 on a lot of these contracts, and that's why I say dig into these books because you'll get up to speed and you'll know how to. These books make law so simple. Right. Because mm -hmm. basically, if you go back to the straw man, when you go over common law in here, you're going to see that common law basically says, I'll read them, that you can't, you must not injure or kill anyone. You must not steal or damage things owned by somebody else. And you must be honest in your dealings and not swindle anyone. So basically, in simple terms, common law says, as long as you don't infringe on the life, liberty or property of anyone else, there is no crime. You are free to embarrass yourself and you are free to make a fool of yourself. There is no crime as long as you do not infringe on the life, liberty or property of someone else. Someone else. OK, you got to play with these words. I'm not going to drop too many bombs, but someone else. OK, that's not enough. Got to take that at your own discretion. But so once you understand that you you if there is no crime, there is no crime against there cannot be no crime against you, the human being. Unless there is an injured party, unless there is a victim, unless there is somebody that can sit on that stand and say that you have caused them some form of damage. Mm -hmm. OK, so driving with your seatbelt off, you get pulled over, you get a ticket. The books will show you how to get out of that ticket and show you just why they, they are charging you. They're charging your straw man. You get some in the court. Court is optional. We have to realize that court is, is court is under the United States Corporation. It's a business. So court is another place of business. But the business, the court is only there to see who's stupid enough to come to pay the fine. You will figure that out. They're not they're not charging you. They're charging your straw man. If there is no hurt, if there is no victim, if there is no damaged party, there is no crime against you, the human being. So we are able to operate freely and, and with, without, you know, what I'm saying uh, being attacked by the government and things of that nature. But little do they know, because we have to realize that people of the law aren't taught law, right? they're taught procedures. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this will even go over their head because they don't know law. They don't even know procedure. It takes like three months to become a cop, but it takes two years to become a, a cosmetologist. So I don't get, you know what I'm saying, exactly. how <laughs> the exactly. math is on that. I, I took, even fire school, I took fire school for two years and I seen people become cops before I even became, before I even got my suit to start running into uh, burning houses. You know what I'm saying? So that's the type of government that we're living with. They're not taught law. They're and taught politicians, they don't have oh. any kind of degree, period. No, just, no degree is necessary. We got some small facts in here, but it'll basically tell you that we haven't had a legal or lawful judge or person in office since like 19, no, 1789. America hasn't had a, 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 a legitimate judge in, uh, in, in, in on the bench since 1789. And that's someone who knows the law for real, because what they teach us is what, you know, what they want us to know, their, their legalities. Right. But it's, it's not that we don't have to. So their statutes are optional for us, the human, but it's not optional for the straw man. So basically, that's what these books will go over. It'll put you on game of how they've been manipulating you, how they've been controlling you, and then show you ways of how you can start getting out of this stuff. It has responses from uh, back and forth with judges of how you can pin up the judge and let the judge know that you are aware of your rights. And if he does, if he tried or if he or she tries to go over you, go over your head, that you will sue them and you can appeal anything that the court says. We have to understand that we enable the government. They don't enable us. So the 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 student can't trump the master. They can't trump us. Everything is through consent. Mm -hmm. Everything is through jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. once, we, once we understand uh, and know how to own our persona, they cannot manipulate us into, into falling under their jurisdiction. Whether they call you Mr. Saunders or Mr. Miss, Miss, Mr. or Mrs., whatever, 
do not adhere to that because that's not understand that's not you okay you are not that person so but but these books will basically show you in totality is how to deal with them it'll show you their scheme it'll show you their game and it'll show you how to start dealing with them because we can't really okay i'm gonna read one one thing because it this, this Who published stuff. these books? I'm sorry. David Robinson. Da okay. Because I just ordered one. I yeah, ordered a guy, one. a guy named David Robinson. Okay. So this he he put in this book, uh, Matthew 10, 16, and that stuck with me. Mm -hmm. I'm not too big on the Bible, but this sticks with me because it says, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Yeah. Be uh -huh. therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Yes, doves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how we got to go into these courtrooms. Mm -hmm. That's how we got to deal with these uh, powers of, of law, these powers that be. And understand that we are human and not legal fiction. And we cannot be tampered with as if we are legal fiction. Okay. And it will also show you a few things to do when you first walk in the courtroom. First thing first, everybody needs to do when they walk in the courtroom. First, don't go out there and get no attorney. Once you read these three books. You're going to be able to defend yourself against anything. I swear, they're small. Right. They're mm -hmm. small. But if you have a bit, an a, a, a ounce, an inkling of common sense, you will apply it to everything that you read in here. And you will be able to go through scenarios of different cases, different uh, arrests and things like that in your mind and just beat them up. <laughs> if, you all, if you all could take a trip through here right now and just see the, the, the encounters that I've thought about and just ways of what I could say to get out of because that's what you got to you got to practice this stuff. Mm -hmm. Not just know, oh, I'm gonna wait till I get into an account. No, no. practice this stuff. Tell yourself, study. This stuff. Yeah, yeah, study this stuff because yeah. any encounter, I'm telling you all, from traffic tickets to child support to uh, uh, I don't, I mean, you name it, you mm -hmm. name it. There is no victim. There is no crime. That's the simplest way I can put it. That's the simplest way I can put it. So in all in, in all in all, these books are just real short and simple. They tell you how to deal with the government. They tell you how to, how they bother you, how they manipulate you and how they control you and just how you can start to take back your persona. The rest of it after reading these is just going to come with connecting with like minded people, putting this puzzle together because we have to understand this is not a one, two, three book fix all. Right. right. This is a puzzle that has been scattered throughout our lifetimes, throughout the lifetimes of our, the lifetimes of our loved mm -hmm. ones, their loved ones. And it's so it's reprogramming. So yeah, you have to it. reprogram yourself. <laughs> so we have to de de <clears throat> detach. De yeah, detach and reprogram. Rewire your brain. Reteach, mm -hmm. relearn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then so, spread. And then spread. spread. And then spread. So that's what it's all about. So basically, the, that's in short. These books just really just go. What's over. the third one? We need the third oh, the, one. Okay, the third one. I'm it down. <laughs> yeah, the third one I didn't really go over. So this one is the Common Law Handbook for Jurors, Sheriffs, Ballots, and ju uh, Justices. This one just has a lot of codes. It has a lot of co and, and more knowledge. Yeah, don't don't get it wrong, but it has a lot of uh, evidence, a lot of cases of the of the, to show you where people actually took this type of stuff to court and won. Okay. Oh, wow. But and then it'll show you uh you know just some defense mechanisms, things like that. Along with the, the tyranny, it show you some defense mechanisms too. It shows like you uh some some word for word, back and mm -hmm. forth arguments with, with with judges, with cops, and things like See, I'm that. Eating this, I'm eating this up right now. I actually I know I'm LSAT. about to buy the other one. I, I actually sat for the LSAT, so I am really familiar with how the law works. So I, I definitely can't wait. Um, I'm waiting till we finish this interview and then I'm ordering my copies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most definitely, most definitely because um they, 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 they put me up on game. I got these, I got a few more books at home, but these are the mm -hmm. ones that I really recommend because mm -hmm. it, they're, they're, you know, a lot of people don't, they already tried to get us with this lie, you know, and put it in a book, people won't read it. So I'm trying to get people the smallest books possible. <laughs> Right, but well, with, with a lot of yeah. information at the same time because they're right. they small, but they pack a hell of a punch. Mm -hmm. But I got a black laws dictionary and all type of things at home to look up some of these terms and things like that. And one thing, okay, I want to go with one more thing the legal legalese. Okay, 
beware of legalese. The reason why I, the reason why I say get these is because they use a term called legalese. Legalese, mm -hmm. in simple terms, to anybody who don't know, is where they take regular everyday words that we use out here <laughs> and they change okay. the meaning, right? Mm -hmm. So after this whole podcast, if I asked y'all at the end of this podcast, did, did you all understand? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I will be asking simply, did any of you comprehend what was mm -hmm. just said? Mm -hmm. If you're out in, in, in the public and you get approached by an officer or you're in the court and a judge says, do you understand? They are not asking you, do you comprehend? This is how legalese work. They, is, they are asking you, do you stand under them? And do you grant them the authority over you so that yeah. they can tell you what to do and that Maybe. you must obey that? Understand. Okay. Understand. Mm -hmm. Ah, I love okay. those words. So what we need to do is understand. Right. Yeah. That's what I, kept, I kept hearing you say. I know. I, I was I like, I know he's saying out. something else. I was like, understand. I'm. I already got it. Like I got yes. it immediately when you said inner. Yeah. Are you getting yes. it here? I, I I I was listening from the whole time we were talking. You were talking. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything yet. I yes. was coming. I was coming with it. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, I'm real. I, I try to be, I try to be real conscious with the wordplay. I love it because that's how they manipulated us through words and things like that. So, um, and, okay, and I drop one more thing. Okay, when it comes to the birth certificate, I recommend everybody goes to the vital records office. Mm -hmm. Go to your nearest vital. Uh, okay, two things I recommend. I recommend everybody go to the vital records office, the nearest vital records office, wherever you, whatever state you were born in. Mm -hmm. And get a few, I mean, three to two to three, three to five, it don't matter. Get a few copies, certified copies with the state seal mm -hmm. of your birth certificate. Okay? Get certified copies of your birth certificate. And why? Because I just told you, when you get caught up with anything, when, it, when dealing with, with, with the law, you have to understand they are not talking to you. They are not summoning you to court. They are talking to your fictitious legal straw man. But your, your birth certificate does serve as your bond. Your birth certificate does show that you are the beneficiary to a to the bond and not a not the trustee. So when you get into any criminal, if you have any criminal charges or you get locked up and you have a bond for something simple, your birth certificate is your bond. Your birth certificate is your way out. Your birth certificate is your payment is your form of payment for any criminal offense charges or, or anything of the nature, okay? And step two, if you if you have a driver's license, we don't necessarily need one, but get the book. You'll figure that out on your own. But if you do have a driver's license, I'm recommending everybody go to the DMV, say they lost it, say it's in the garbage can. I don't care what you got to say. Get you a new license. Get you a new a form of ID. And when you sign for this ID, realize that your name is in all caps. And I just told you, your name in all caps signifies a corporation. And hence, when, when I say wordplay, you got to realize when you die, when people die, they call their body a corpse. Right. What's that? Corporation. If you finish it out, it's corporation. You oh. are incorporated. So your body is a corporation. So when you go and you sign for this ID, you're signing for your corporation. When you sign for your corporation, i.e., please put without prejudice UCC 1-308 under your signature because that is basically letting them know that you understand that you are human and you are not fictitious property and you are uh, reserving your rights under common law. And you are not uh, you are not compelled to perform under any contract that you did not enter into willingly, knowingly, and voluntarily. Yes, you voluntarily sign. Yes, you knowingly sign. But the, once you read these, you'll understand that you don't know the whole gist of that contract. Huh? Because mm -hmm. a lot of us don't even understand why we can why we can get tickets for not wearing our seatbelt and things like that anyway. And it's really because they use they operate they don't use common law on the roads. They use commercial law. So you have to understand, understand commercial law as well. So those are my two uh, points to make. Definitely get those taken care of. Go sign your driver's license without prejudice, UCC 1-308 in parentheses, or you can just put without prejudice. And then go get your uh, birth certificate. Go get you a few copies of your birth certificate um, and have that on record. And if you ever go to court, 
make sure you get these books because your first thing you want to do when you go into a courtroom after the judge gets to talk gets done talking to you and going over the charges and he asks do you uh recognize the charges being brought against you let him know you do not understand those charges and make a reservation of your rights pursuant to the ucc 1-308 when you make that reservation of your rights any charges brought against you at that time any charges or codes Brought against being brought against you at that time must run construed in harmony with common law and common law simply states if there is no victim there's no crime and for example if i go to court for let's just say i ran a red light right i ran a red light and i didn't have my seatbelt on and my tail light was out they give me three tickets right first off you can the books will show you ways that you can write into the court where you ain't even really got to go to court but let's just say we go, right? Mm -hmm. First off, my license is going to have without prejudice UCC 1-3 weight written under it, which means I'm, I don't, I'm not compelled to perform under this commercial contract that y'all got me written under. So running the red light is not a crime because if I didn't hit anybody, if I didn't harm anybody in doing so, there is no crime. So when you go to the court for all these tickets that you just got, you make that reservation. They must run all current charges and codes construed, construed in harmony with common law. And once I then ask that judge to present me a victim, present me an injured party, and they can't present one because nobody was injured in me doing and me not wearing my seatbelt. Right. You know, yeah. that's when we can start to get out of some of these things. So the books just basically break it down and show you how you can start to manipulate their system against them and use so, it for your benefit. I just have a question because I'm always like all over, you know, researching on my end. What about police brutality? So when it comes to police brutality, uh, so this is why I say a lot of this is going to be, a lot of this is going to come to effect when we get the masses moving. Right. It's going to take us getting each other to move and waking each other up because mm -hmm. honestly, Police officers, first of all, the police department force, they're all independent, privately owned companies. OK, so police officers, when they're out in public, little do they know they're private contractors, just as I am with real estate. Mm. They have just as much jurisdiction over me as the as the manager at McDonald's has over me. Right. <laughs> so they really don't have no right to enforce any statutes or any laws that they quote unquote have created. They don't have the, that jurisdiction. They don't have that right. They take an oath to uphold common law in the constitution, not to enforce statutes. So when it comes against police brutality, honestly, we have the right, be, and I show. Well, I can't show the, the screen, but right. it's under joinder. It's called joinder, which means that the officers are officers are basically joint under the same law that we are under. So mm -hmm. when they're out acting as when they're out acting as independent contractors, and you know, what I'm saying getting physical with our counterparts, our our uh, our family out here. Honestly, we have the right to retaliate. We have the right to draw blood. We have the right to fight for death. To fight back, right? Just because they're they, causing harm. Yes, because you're causing someone harm. Mm -hmm. So they and little do police officers know they really don't have no backing by the police force that they're they're, they're working with. Hmm. Okay, because I just told you that the government is fictitious all in the, all in the same matter, and that you. But it's all about getting us aware of the fact. So we can separate ourselves from it. And if we can separate ourselves from the government, that means we can separate ourselves from the same cops and brutality. You know what I'm saying? But they need to understand the laws that we know as well. So when it comes to police brutality, I say don't don't retaliate. I don't need anybody getting killed out here. We have okay. enough of that without even retaliating. Exactly. exactly. Now, I do. Now, I will say. Now, let me let me backtrack. I won't say don't retaliate. Be, be, be smart. Calm, be, be smart. If you must retaliate the right way. Not yes, if you must do it. But my thing is what, what I've been seeing on TikTok now is we are getting we're waking up each other individually and yes. we are not operating under statuses anymore. Right. I mean, under names anymore. So you have to realize when a cop stops you, 
First of all, he won't have no consent to do anything to you as long as you do not give him your name. That's mm -hmm. the first thing they try to get up out of you. So that's when you got to read these books and get familiar with legal leads. Mm -hmm. OK, because they try to they, they're going to try to keep getting you under their jurisdiction. But as long as you understand that without your consent, they have no, no, no authority. You're going to be all right. You won't even have to deal with it. But but people go out and give their name. People put start pulling out their IDs and handing it to them. None of that is required by law. So what we have to do to refrain from police brutality is wake up our people mm -hmm. and make them aware of their inalienable rights. You don't have the law doesn't state that you have to give a police officer your your name or your ID or your driver's license. And I just told you, if there is no victim, there is no crime. So once we get into understanding the questions that we need to be asking during these encounters, then we'll be able to take back that right and that persona. Because once we give our name, once we give them our ID, once we do anything in cooperation with that police officer or that, that, that uh, enforcement officer, we are now subjecting ourselves to their jurisdiction and we're standing under them. We're standing under them. We just authorized them the uh, the ability to be able to tell us what to do. Uh -huh. So now they can manipulate that situation to how they see fit. Right. And uh -huh. so a lot of the times those do get confrontational. Of course. You right. Well, saying? because they're not going to like you bucking the system. They're mm -hmm. they're going to they're going to get upset. And that's when the brutality a lot of times happens. Right. I so, mean, it can happen even if you are complying. Yeah. And that's but, why I say that's why mm -hmm. I say be smartest. That's what you say. Uh, be wise it, as a serpent. Wise as a serpent is, yeah. is, is smart as a dove. So, so that's what we got to do. So even in these encounters, once we know that we could want, we could just talk, talk to them, ask the question. If they still go about being physical and getting physical with you and arresting you without your consent, or without you giving your name and this, that, and the third, my thing is let them do it mm -hmm. because they don't have the consent. But what we need to understand and realize is we can, on the back end, sue that officer. We mm -hmm. can sue the judge that we go see if they actually put us in jail. Mm -hmm. We can sue the bondsman who clears the uh, bond if they give us a bond. Uh -huh. Because now we now they're, they're uh, uh, committing fraud. They have brought fraud into the court. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So once we understand that we can use the same law against these people and people be like, well, they, they, they the, the fear tactic is the main thing that keeps yeah, us fear. quiet. Absolutely. No, y'all got to realize that, look, if you ever get in trouble with the law, oh, Vante going to be in the courtroom with you. Right. Uh -huh. I'm a, that's what we got to have. So uh -huh. what about people is not just to get you the information, but to also let you know, family, if we ever get in trouble, you got your backing. You got uh -huh. your team. We in the courtroom with you. These people ain't going to be able to just throw you to the wolves. Uh -huh. We know what's going on with you. And if they do anything with you, unlike un, uh, that we don't that we disagree with, retaliation must become a thing. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? We oh. got to fight for our people just as much as, you know what I'm saying? We want them to fight for us. No, they, 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 uh -huh. Government ain't never gonna do nothing for us. We gotta do it for ourselves. Yeah, absolutely, of absolutely. This so is some have all the nuggets right here. Nuggets. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like, hey, we need protection as we speak. Now I'm joking. <laughs> oh, you know, I, yeah, we do. I, I recommend. I reckon. See, I'm big on self defense. Me too. And I'm big on respect. Me too. And yeah, one thing I, about I, the law is, yeah, where, I missed the self where I could carry concealed. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, see, but one thing about the law is it doesn't respect us. Right. So we're trying to respect the law that doesn't even respect us, mm -hmm. which ultimately ultimately means we don't respect ourselves. Mm -hmm. So once we start to put this information out here, this information is going to take effect to the people that really want to have respect for themselves. Mm -hmm. And once we wake enough of us up, we can start to move and put together our own communities because, and I say this a lot because it, there is a lot of, there are civilizations uh, alive and in, 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 in structured today that doesn't have the influence of the, uh, the overall American oh. government. Mm -hmm. There are little towns and, and cities mm -hmm. in there. I, I know I, I have the Native Americans immediately and yeah. their reservations. Like they are their own community. Like they literally don't have these structures in place. They, they have their own. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Law, law, uh, institutions. They have their own police, their own law, mm -hmm. their own government, mm -hmm. their own money, their own mm -hmm. schools, church, everything. 
basically like Black Wall Street that used to be on, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah. You know we were just saying? talking about that the other day. Yeah. yeah. We've got to get back to that. That's what I'm on. And that's yeah. what we got to get our collective back on. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, well, I feel like we're, we're where we need to be. Mm-hmm. Marina's my black, my, my black Russian sister. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> we're about to make a make an impact. And it's funny because we all are in, in major c- cities. Uh, all three of us are in major places. She's in New York. I'm in the Maryland, D.C. area. You're in Atlanta. It's a lot of opportunity in these big, huge areas. Yeah. Especially I am in a DMV, like that's huge. Yes. Um, and New York as well. So we can make that impact. All it takes is one person spreading that that word and that message, and then that person telling another person, and we get our teams together and we, yeah, we each, band together. Each one, when, once each one reaches one, because reach you gotta one. reach one before you can teach one. Exactly. Right. But once we once we reach, we can teach. And then we can begin to reprogram this 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 whole thing and show people what life really is. Because to back to back all this up, because a lot of people they once you once you break their once you break their system apart, they don't know what to believe in. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a that's a that's a fear too for a lot of us. What we what will we do then? What will we do now? How will life look now? And to answer that question, I tell a lot of my family that we got to get back into our spiritual nature of working. Uh So this is exactly what the government did. This is what they wanted. They took us from working spiritually and told us that we had to do it physically. Uh So they have switched up the whole DNA molecular structure of how we think, Uh operate, move, and associate and interact with one another and even nature. Uh Right. (laughs) Excuse me. So... When breaking down their system, we have to realize that we don't have to create a new system. All we have to do is implement the ancient system that we operate. It was already here. It was Mm -hmm. already here. Mm -hmm. Our people were very in tune with nature and one another. We have to understand that all the time. Exactly. We have Mm -hmm. to understand and understand that we are one. And we mm-hmm. must come together and start acting like it. People on the outside are still thinking that this is a battle between black and whites, gays and straights, ups and downs, lefts and mm-hmm. right. This ain't that type of battle. Mm-hmm. There's never been that type of battle. That's mm-hmm. the battle that they programmed us to. Believe I was gonna that say that's the, that's the that's the 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 one that the thing they want to sell you with. That's so we could focus on. Uh, like I, we were just talking about this the other day about how society is so focused on gay and straight and abortion, and I'm like. Why is this even a question or topic? It's like, so easy because we right, should we should just we laugh have a right at to, it. To, to to be whoever we want to be. Like exactly. who can tell you what to do with your body and who can tell you who to love? Like now, why are we just, this is such a <laughs> distraction? Exactly. Like why are we even talking about this? Right. <laughs> I tell you why. I tell you, I tell you my version of why. And uh and, and this is when I'm never mind. We're not going. I'm not even going to talk. Well, that's that's a whole other video. You know, you're yeah. coming on my channel too. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna come on. Yeah, I'm gonna come <laughs> on there. I'm gonna come on there. So yeah, that's just to wrap up. That's what we got to get back to, uh, y'all. Is once we break, once we break down this system, know that we already have an ancient system in place that's been mm-hmm. working for for millennia, and that we just got to all tap back into. So once we get back to doing our spiritual work. And uh, tapping back into that, our real true nature and our real true calling as, you know what I'm saying, family, and, and instead of being divided and, and, and individualized, mm-hmm. we'll be able to bring that together, have that community working for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We have people out here that can do a whole bunch. Everything that's done in the corporate world can be done by individuals in the independent world. Absolutely. Bring, bring our plumbers out of the corporate world and have mm-hmm. them in our community that we start creating. Mm-hmm. Bring our That's- electricians and, and cooks and chefs exactly. and teachers and all that stuff out yep. of these. We got real estate. Yeah, real estate. <laughs> bring them out of these corrupted areas. And don't look, don't get me started. Y'all want to get real estate with me. I'll show you how to get your house for free. I'll hey. show you how to sign your document. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Hey. So, it's funny because my daughter always talks about that. She's like, Mom, we need to go back to the land that our forefathers had in South Carolina. That's our land. We need to go claim our land. And she's 20. She'll be 23. And she's like, mom, let's go get our land. I'm like, all right, Ariel, we're going to get it. Just give me a minute. 
<laughs> yeah. to get yeah, some she, other stuff together. We're going to go get our land. We're going to go claim what's ours. She feels <laughs> an ancestor. She, she, she feels she an think, Oh, yeah. See, my daughter and, but I've always raised my children to be independent free thinkers. So I don't like that systemic yeah. mindset anyway. Because I'm a, she know, I say this all the time. I always go against the grain. I was born a rebel. <laughs> yeah, we're the black, so, we're the black it's, in my, it's in my DNA. <laughs> so, and and my ancestors um, on my dad's side, we come from Malcolm X. My okay. last name, my maiden name is Little. Oh. Um, so it's in my it's in my genes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's funny you mention him because I feel like you know I'm a, I'm a I'm a spiritual person, so I I don't say this is just a shell, but I feel like. I feel like that boy Malcolm may be a, a, he may encase me a little bit. I got a little yeah, hint. Yeah, we got we we probably some kin. Yeah, I got a little I got <laughs> got a little hint of Malcolm. So we definitely gonna, uh continue to to spread this spread this joyous knowledge because it's, it's for the collective. We got to come together and, and, and definitely bring our people back to uh to their true nature, man. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So. And it's full circle. It's mind, it's soul, it's spirit, it's body. It's how we take care of ourselves. It's how we thrive in this society. We talk about it all the time. Like, uh, you work so hard and you still can't pay your bills. You know, it's not, it's not meant to be that way. Like that is not the way God intended for us as humans to live on this earth. No. It was not meant to be a struggle, a never ending cycle. As so, above, so below. We can bring above, heaven on earth. Exactly. Oh, heaven on earth. Looking at your evil eye, just took my bracelet off. <laughs> oh yeah, I got to charge it. I charged it in a full moon, and I haven't I haven't put it back on yet. <laughs> yeah, I got you know we got to represent. So it, and it goes for a circle. So the reason the reason why I even mentioned the spiritual part of it is because it goes hand in hand with this. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's like once you understand that you've been manipulated so long, a lot of people will still be lost because now your whole life. Has been it's a game. Your whole life, yeah, yeah, your whole life is up for question. So, so it's now, like, what, what do you do follow? Do now? Right. Yeah. Right. So, and it's so good that you mentioned that because I was going to say, once you get this reprogramming, now, I mean, once you deep program yourself, now you've got to reprogram yourself with the proper information and where we go from here. But right. it's going to be very hard for people who are like, let's say, older generation, even me oh, right yeah. now, all of us, right? We still have to pay our rent, pay our bills. How do you stop people collectively to stop paying it? Because even though I have a good job, technically speaking, I can pay for my rent and everything. I don't want to. All right. OK, I, so, so I got, got you. Yeah. So that's so the information once once I as, as that's why you see my TikTok, I put my, my number out the whole yes. time. Whoever wants to connect, please message me personally because so I can get a good lump sum of this group. So as I get the collective in order, really, once you start reading these, we, we, we have I've been working on documents and I've been typing up the uh, some templates on what we can start sending out to these creditors and things like that. So mm -hmm. stop paying these bills is really is, is really simpler, a lot simpler than we think. So the books will show you, you just got to, when you write, you, you want to put this stuff on black and white, put this stuff on paper. So as you see, they have manipulated us into electronic everything. Right. Absolutely. Everything is e-sign this, e-sign mm -hmm. that, or I'll send it to your email. They don't want to see no. you no paper statement. Listen, when I first paid <laughs> up my credit, I sent letters. I yeah. sent typed letters. I was not yeah. doing it electronically. I, right. I, I said, nope, this is not my debt. I sent letters. Exactly. So that's what we're going to do when it comes to these bills. The yes. book have some templates to start with. Mm -hmm. And then I had another guy that I uh, merged with. We we had about 15 different templates that we that we have been going through and trying to condense down to a good solid three because mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff is repetitive. A lot of because right. all 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 uh, financial institutions are the same. They're sold. Mm -hmm. They're fictitious. So you can ask for the same validations and that that they won't be able to prove to you. So getting out of these bills and things like that. First, you got to I, I recommend these to get the knowledge so you can know how things will start to move. Mm -hmm. But I have the blueprint. I have the stuff typed up and I'm I, I take it upon myself this month, July, to actually get this stuff on paper and in order. I'm paying my bills for July. Yeah. OK. But come August 1st. Oh, we mailing out. 
Oh, absolutely. Okay. I'm right. Yeah. We, we're definitely going to talk again, Devonte, because yeah. I'm right with you. I've I've done this. Yes. I've actually done this, and yeah. I've seen. So so yes, but the, so that's why I say I'm not sending out the documents, and I'm not really helping people get the documents that they need knowledge. to chart to start sending out until they can recite some of this with me. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I'm challenging a few people because mm -hmm. I need people that's hungry. I need people that's going to invest. We've been told what to do. We've been guided our whole life. Yes. I'm looking for people that's willing to take an initiative now. Yep. To go get so, it. Yeah. Yes. So I need people to show me receipts and, and highlights in their books. And once you do that, I can start sharing the rest of the, the blueprint with you of what I know so far, because I'm also looking into the 1099A thing. I've just started seeing that. So it's a it's a few different ways to skin this skin this cat to skin this turkey. But <laughs> it's it's all about getting the information first. So to, to sum up your question, the blueprint is in these books. We, we just got to write this stuff out and send it out to these creditors. And basically mm -hmm. what we'll be asking for in these letters None of these institutions will be able to give to us, which will then show why every every contract that we've signed thus far has been void, has been uh, 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 paid in full already and things of that nature, because we'll be asking them for certain validations that they won't be able to lawfully give to us. But at the same time, you will beat out a lot of court cases because you in these letters, you can't just go in these letters saying, hey, I'm not paying y'all no more. I got uh, I got insight on some <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And I'm not sending y'all no more money. Y'all. Yeah, we're just, done. Right? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> y'all keep my lights. on. I'm not paying y'all no more. Y'all keep my phone. on. I'm not paying y'all no more. No. In these letters, you will see that you have to offer. Oh, we slipping. We slipping. Erica. Erica. Yo, oh, yeah. oh. I think when I you're looking at the it. camera, no, nah, no, nah, she's taking notes. But when you're looking at the notes. camera, if when you're uh -oh. not looking, it goes up. <laughs> oh, okay, that's cool. That's cool. It's the new iPad. It's like some that's cool. Stuff. That's cool. But okay, so basically, I'm sorry, what you got, I'm ordering my books. <laughs> oh, hey, do that. Amen. So what you got to realize is when you when you're going into these contracts and things like that, what, what we'll be asking for in these letters, no financial institution will be able to provide for us. Okay, so. But in the letters, you, you aren't just saying, I'm not paying that. What you will be doing is offering what they call a conditional, a, a conditional agreement or conditional acceptance, which mm -hmm. is basically phrased as if, like, I will, I will pay any debts that I lawfully owe mm -hmm. upon the proof of certain validations. Mm -hmm. And the validations, they won't be able to prove to you. So, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Reprogramming. I love yeah. this. So even if they try to take you to court, you will beat you will beat the court case anyway because you already offer con a conditional agreement, which is conditional acceptance, which says I will pay. I will pay. All you got to do is show condition. me that I lawfully owe it, right. and they won't be able to show you that you lawfully owe it. One because it's a few. That's why I say it's a few ways to skin this cat. Because one. They tell you that all bills and all charges are already paid in full from day one. But on the back end of that, they, that what they're going to tell you is any contract that you sign that deals with the exchange of Federal Reserve note is already voided from day mm. one. Mm. Voided because a true contract is substance for substance. We just went over how money has no substance, has no value. So it's a few ways that you can get out of a lot of these contracts just by just reading these books and playing with scenarios in your head. Wow. So this that's how you, yeah, that's how you'll beat a lot of it because it, it, it's in the validation. It's what you're asking them for. You're going to ask these creditors in these, uh, these uh, loan officers or whatever for the, the, these specific forms of validation. And a lot of, and a lot of the times, one of the validations is that you'll be asking for is a copy of the uh, original contract with the wet ink signature of both you and the other party. But a lot of these contracts that we signed today, if you actually take a take a take a moment to think about them, mm -hmm. it's only your signature on it. Like when I signed my new rent lease, it was only my signature. It's only your signature. And yes. Then probably, and then and then uh, what Erica said, a lot of them was e signed. Mm hmm. But if you even on a contract itself, it's only your signature. And why? Big fact, big one right here. 
Corporations can only deal with corporations. Mm -hmm. Humans cannot exist in the corporate world. So that's why understanding the difference between your human self and your legal fictitious personality is a big must because corporations can only deal with other corporations and humans cannot exist inside the inside the corporate world. So this is for all the people that swear they're going to start moving through EINs and things of that nature. Hold on. We might have a better route for you because totally. you said that's a corporation. <laughs> You're subject to a lot of statutes and things that you really don't understand yeah. by signing yeah. with that corporation and not knowing that you are already a corporation. You have a corporation. That's why on a lot of these uh, contracts, it says EIN or social security or social security number. number. Right. Which if, if even in the business world, you shouldn't be using those interchangeably. Because your EIN represents that entity, whereas your exactly. social represents you. You exactly. So it just makes a whole lot of sense. Like well, that's no, why. Hold on, pause. Your social don't represent you. Well, it represents, it represents the straw man. Straw man. <laughs> <laughs> your incorporation. So that's, right. that's the difference. But the difference between your social security number and your mm -hmm. EIN number is your EIN. You have to build that revenue up. You have exactly. to build up that 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 uh that history. Mm -hmm. The social security number, it got millions tied to it already. For, because you were born. But, uh, but just because you was born. <laughs> exactly. Just because you allowed them to incorporate you through their right. system. So right. that's the difference between the EIN and the social. Wow. Wow. So you way. mentioned one thing in your videos that when you fix the credit score, that's when we can actually grow. You yes. against them. Right. Yes. So my what my advice would be to anybody to, to even if you got to come to me if y'all don't know anybody personally feel mm -hmm. free to reach out to Devonte I'm on I don't I don't think I said my uh my TikTok but I'll drop all my names in the social media I'll the take end. all that information from you after okay. the books okay. everything okay cool no, everything. so um yeah that's my advice so now my advice comes with some guts. OK, because it's it, once you once you understand what's a crime and what's not a crime is now I'm it's not OK. I'm about, confidence I'm about, now. Yeah, I'm about, to just, I'm about to use it to my advantage. So before I heard about the 1099, which I'm, I'm starting to look into the 1099A form, I'm about to look into that. But the route that I had originally was to help one with that credit. Now, if you ask me, it's still unnecessary. OK, the credit score is still unnecessary because. You yeah. have the money in your, it's, the money is there. It's in your state issued trust account, but apparently you're going to need your, you're going to need your credit score to be up in order to access this stuff. Because it's already the system. Right. It's already the system. So it's a part of their system. So how I figured to beat them is I'm going to help, I'm helping individuals get their credit scores up for little to no cost, if anything. Okay. Once you get your credit score up, now we can, we have that 800 or whatever we need. I say, Let's go ahead and get, secure some stuff for yourself. If you need a house, let's apply for that business loan. And so I'm, I'm going to explain to you real quick how these business, how, how, how a mortgage loan would work, okay? And why I say we can do it this way and why my way comes with guts, okay? So let's say, for instance, you go to Navy Federal and you apply for a mortgage loan for, let's mm -hmm. say, $400,000. First, you got to understand that banks work, banks run off of credits, debits and balances uh -huh. okay that's how they operate but then if you if you if you dig a little bit deeper into the banking system you'll realize that no bank has an accounting system has an accounting records which means no bank is dealing with their own assets accounting is for dealing with the the the, the company's or, or the organization's own money uh -huh. so banks do not have accounting facilities okay they don't have those Right. So when you go into a bank and you apply for that four hundred thousand dollar mortgage loan, when you sign that first promissory note, your signature is making that promissory note valuable. What Navy Federal is going to do is take that promissory note to the Federal Reserve Bank. They're going to cash out in good faith your four hundred thousand dollars because what you just authorized them to do with your signature is to go into your trust, uh, your straw man state issued mm -hmm. trust account and pull that four hundred thousand dollars, which is going to be there, by the way, mm -hmm. from your state issued trust account. 
So now Navy Federal is now credited $400,000 from the Federal Reserve. <clears throat> what they're going to do with that $400,000 now is debit it to you for your purchase of your house. I just told you, credits, debits, balances. In their books now, that is a balanced transaction. Mm -hmm. Yep, but credits and debits. Balanced. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a balanced transaction. Mm -hmm. But how do banks make billions of dollars each year without using their own money, which they aren't, they aren't uh, legally authorized to use other people's <laughs> money either. But they'll tell you that they can and we just believe it, right? Uh -huh. right? They aren't. So what they're going to do is now tell you that you got to pay this $400,000 back plus interest over 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to sign another promissory note guaranteeing or promising that you're going to pay this loan back in good faith over X amount of time. What that second promissory note is doing is guaranteeing money for your seller in this transaction. We'll bring the seller in real quickly. The first promissory note, they pulled the whole $400,000 from, from your account. That really clears the uh the, the purchase of your house mm -hmm. if it's if it's at 400 or even 350 350 mm -hmm. it clears the purchase but there's not much money left over for the seller so what they do is they then give you another promissory note saying that you got to pay this money back and so when you sign that one in good faith saying oh i'm gonna pay this money back because you think that you have to what they then do with that second promissory note is take it to another bank or even back to the federal reserve and they actually get cashed out that whole loan. So they get the, they get the original $400,000 mm -hmm. on top of the interest that you would have paid over the 30 years or whatever year. percent that you would have mm -hmm. paid. So mm -hmm. they get that whole lump sum of, of good deal of cash sent over to their assets real quick. And then that's how they break out money for the seller. But lo and behold, that second promissory note just made you indebted to the bank. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if, if one actually look takes a look at their deed, they are now listed as a tenant on their deeds. So even if you pay that loan in or that mortgage in full, you would still not be the owner of that house, quote unquote, technically, because it's owned by the state. The bank owns that house. That's how banks foreclose on houses and things like that. This is how they get ownership of those houses because you are signing your house over to them knowing that one, that contract is null and void because it's substance for substance. The bank did not put up anything of equal value, of its own value. The bank was never at risk of losing anything. In the first place. Because so exactly. it was already paid. So it was already it's already paid. So my way of going about things is getting one's credit score up. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't have the job or the, at the adequate income to say that you need to make to, to secure your loan, I say make the documents. Mm -hmm. Tell them you need whatever you whatever you say you got to whatever you got to make to secure your loan. At this point, we got to go broke for self. I need to secure this loan. I'm going to say I make because honestly, I don't have to make anything. The money's there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And then on the back end, falsifying documents, if you know what I know, is <laughs> a crime. So it's like, who is the injured part? I needed a house, Your Honor. I needed a place for me and my kids to sleep, lay, my, lay our heads peacefully. Hard times out here. Y'all got us working paycheck to paycheck. The system is horrible. Horrible. I know. They want you to work over 80 hours a week and still, and then they want you to work over 80 hours a week and then over 85% of your money goes right back to the government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, no, people, we have to realize that we have been bamboozled. So if you want to run with me, I say, let's get your credit score up. Mm -hmm. Because that, if they want to look at that, let them look at it. How high Guess does it up. have to be? Uh, okay, so uh, standardly, uh, for uh, uh, the typical uh, lender, they want to see uh, anywhere around a 680 or above. 680. Mm -hmm. And that's for good finances and things like that. But my thing is, y'all don't worry about the finances. Don't worry about the percent of the loan that you're going to have to pay back and things of that nature. We are manipulating all of that. We are yeah. skipping that. 
Oh, sorry. But basically, <laughs> well, this is not going to be We're on taking the- charge. <laughs> That's it. Okay. <laughs> For us, this yeah. is our conversation. Okay, cool. Right, right. Okay, cool. But yeah, basically, that's that's my way of 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 manipulating and shit because it's like my straw man's state issued account has so much money that I don't even know what's in there, and they don't give us the proper tools to adequately make what I need to make to secure or make a make a living for ourselves out here. So, right. in the books, you will see it. it the, the guy says. Please do not feel bad for and feel like you're you're stealing from the government. You're stealing from the bank when you start operating under these these things, because you have to realize you're not doing nothing wrong. So to one to one who who may view this or or see see it later on, making those documents may seem like doing something wrong. Right. Saying that you make a certain amount of money that you don't necessarily make may seem like you're doing something wrong, but in all the totality, it's not doing anything wrong because one, we can break that system down to begin with. The money isn't even real. So if the money ain't real, me falsifying a fake document to say I make the money that ain't real. Like y'all, y'all see how I can play with it? <laughs> right. Because they're actually being the manipulative ones. They're, They've been manipulative they are. since birth. We're just exactly. using their system against them. Basically. Yeah, just taking their knowledge and flipping it on them. That's yeah. all I'm here to do. So, mm-hmm. and that's before I found out about the 1099A. So I'm gonna look into the 1099A. We're loving this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna look into the 1099A as right. well. <laughs> but to manipulate them the way I see it is you can yeah. make whatever documents you need to make. Right. Because necess- technically, you're dealing, it's all fake. The money that we deal with, the the uh the word that they use for it in the state of law is colorable. Mm-hmm. And colorable is something that uh is seen, it presents itself to be genuine, but it is not otherwise mm-hmm. counterfeit. Mm-hmm. So the money in the law, we're, we're operating with colorable money, and they have made a whole colorable law system to back their colorable money. Right. So how are we doing anything wrong if they're being colorable themselves? Exactly. So all we got to do is understand that we are human and what laws actually pertain to us. And when I say that's why I made emphasis on when I read the laws, it says someone, anybody, somebody, not a corporation, not a business, not an entity, not any of that, anything of that sort, because humans cannot exist in the corporate world. So even if I run down to Walmart because my TV just went out and I get me, I see an 80 inch and I just put it in my buggy and just slide on home and they follow me to the house because I just took this TV from Walmart and they try to really reprimand me for it. I let them do their thing and I get to court. Once you make their reservation, please present a victim. Who's the victim from me taking the TV from Walmart? They're going to say Walmart, the corporation. (laughs) Okay, that's that's true in fact, but can, <laughs> can Walmart please stand on the stand and attest to the damages? Can Walmart please sit on the stand and attest to being hurt and damagedly? And you know to the damage. Right. No, he cannot because Walmart <laughs> is soulless. Walmart cannot have a third party representation at, to sit in for him either. Him, him or her, whoever, whatever Walmart really is. Mm-hmm. So no one can. Not even the manager or the CEO can come in and sit on that stand and attest for me taking that TV from Walmart because at the end of the day, I'm going to flip that law right back onto you, sir. And you are not Walmart. <laughs> you did. You you are not suffering or of any damage from me taking that TV from Walmart. So it's all, it's all about waking up the masses and showing them just how much fun we can start having. <laughs> as long as they're not going to be like rioting and taking all the stuff. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, no riot. Because that's why I say we no, gotta- we're not trying to deal with ignorant people. We're mm-hmm. trying to deal with people that are, they're not here to try to take, well, I'm not going to say take advantage because technically they've been taking advantage of us, but we're here to really help people not struggle because it's the, that's yeah. the issue. The, it, the social issue for me as a person I want to see people excel and be successful, not have to always struggle to have things that they're supposed to have. You know, right. you work 
hard and you still are not able to pay your bills or right. you you know you basically give your whole life over to this job and you're still not able to enjoy your life and take a vacation and do the things that we're supposed to do only the people that the rich people Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the only ones that get to see this but we yeah. as the everyday people that are the majority by the way yeah. are the ones struggling yeah. you know that's where my heart is it's not about I'm not here to try to take over you know and, and take things I'm here to, to live the life that I'm supposed to live we, like that's we, what we're supposed to have rightfully. And, I, and I'll simplify it for you mm -hmm. I'm just here to simply spread the truth mm -hmm. exactly it's what you do truth. with it yeah. yeah what you do with it is up so, to you yeah, so in the, in this whole ordeal, what we gotta what we when we reaching and teaching, we also gotta make sure we implement. That's why I say the spiritual side is it's it's a must with this mm -hmm. yes. because you're gonna have mm -hmm. to get into a mode of understanding who you are, what you are as a whole, mm -hmm. and then also understanding and understanding how to control your emotions mm -hmm. because this is gonna be a this is gonna result to a spiritual battle. Absolutely, where we're gonna have to be able to to control ourselves and not just retaliate and go for mm -hmm. this, this is not and take a stand. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got to take a stand and just stand on truth and with mm -hmm. standing on truth, it will look as if we are, you know, manipulating them and mm -hmm. stealing from them and things of that yeah, nature. Of but all the while they have been stealing from us. So mm -hmm. it's about mm -hmm. getting the masses to understand that and not to just start rioting and going out mm -hmm. And going crazy, yeah. Yeah, but all, yeah. although we are lawfully, we have a that lot right. Do yeah, yeah. Y'all took our stuff. <laughs> yeah, lawfully, like the lawfully way, way to be taking our stuff back. But there's a way, and that's why you said, "Wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove." It's all about why you do what you do. It's the heart behind it, and that's the spiritual yeah. part. It's yeah. the character. What? What? Why are you doing this? It's it's why you want to do it. It's not about the what. It's the why. Mm -hmm. yes you know, it's the why we do what we do i mean why we even started these channels and you started your tiktok and we did this to make a to change the, yes. the dynamic of how people think and how they are viewing things when it's just skewed that's this, not the way it's supposed to be no let's get back to who we originally are supposed to be yeah we're trying to help people think for themselves for a change mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. a lot of people mm -hmm. have been thought for a lot mm -hmm. of people have been programmed to think in a certain way. So therefore, you, you haven't been able to really think for yourself. So what I'm trying to do is give people back their freedom, show people just how born equal and free really applies to them. Mm -hmm. And, it, and, it, and it, it's, it will get to a point where we realize that, you know what I'm saying, Walmart, Kroger, Publix, all that stuff, we really can just go in there and shop freely. And it's not about just running in there, ramsacking and taking everything and emptying the store <laughs> and leaving. But no, just really understanding that we are free. We're entitled to it. Yeah. Right. We can go in there and shop comfortably and walk out that store. As we should. All right. You know what I'm saying? He talks but about it all the time. Yeah. I don't want to pay for this. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. To. We talk about it all day long. Why do we have okay. to? Why do we have to pay for this? I'm tired of paying for this. <laughs> I don't want to pay these end, gas prices. <laughs> and then on the back end, I'm going to tell people like this. Yes, you're paying for real. You're paying for tangible objects. Mm -hmm. Fake money. How right. are you doing that? I just told you earlier. America mm -hmm. has forcefully made mm -hmm. other nations sell their products for uh -huh. the American dollar. Mm -hmm. okay? So they are selling their stuff by force, knowing that our money has no value. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. It's a, they are some raggedy people. I oh, swear. man. They, listen, oh. they, like you said, give them an applause. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. They I, did an amazing I, job showing our lives, respect. our mind, and everything else. Amazing. They From the air we breathe. That's all. <laughs> yeah, to everything else. Good job. Yeah, but the, that's it. From the air we breathe to, to the to the to the houses we sleep in, to the bills we pay, to the and how we work and how we live. Yeah, and how we work. Good job. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Little by little, we're gonna get to we just have to do like right now. I'm going to post this and we're gonna have to take one step at a time. Yeah. I'm gonna post a little bit on TikTok, on my Instagram, and on my YouTube. Yeah. And I'm gonna start Thanks. boosting this so people can say I'm gonna send it to my friends. I'm like, listen, or else. <laughs> nah, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, we I can do, do the same. 
I'll put it on my in, um, on my YouTube and on my um, Instagram as well. I'll and put it on mine. We're gonna yes. get it. We're gonna get I'll it out you. here because that's the key. But the thing is, I think some of these nuggets you can't give to everybody because I know certain people are listening and they'll try to change some things because they're gonna change the legalese to make it line up with what they wanted to line up with. So we've got to be selective. You know, why is this a serpent? <laughs> yeah. Harmless yeah. as a dove. Not everybody's going to be team us, but it's okay. We don't need everybody. We just need the people then that, that are. Yeah. It's going to happen enough. regardless. It's going to happen yeah. regardless. Yeah. It's happening bold regardless. Enough. Yeah. They can try to change whatever they want to try to change. At the end of the day, I am not legal fiction. Exactly. We're still humans. We're human. And we will Even though it. human actually means, is a different meaning. It means um, sea monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they yeah, they label us as monster. In yeah, area. we're actually, <laughs> we're supposed to be called in deity or something. Uh, indigenous. Indigenous. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's what I was saying. Well, indigenous status. people, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying by the status. If you get caught up with the police officers and things like that on the outside, don't give them your name. Tell them you operate by your status. Your status is indigenous Aboriginal Indian of North America of Turtle Island, if anything, or just say you are indigenous Aboriginal Indian. I operate by my status. I am indigenous Aboriginal Indian. Mm -hmm. I love it. I can't wait. I can't wait to get my books. <laughs> oh, yeah. And once we get the books, we'll because we, we, we'll have more. I'm pretty sure we're, this ain't the only one. We'll oh, have no. more and we'll, we'll start to go through a collab and really break this stuff down with a more structured so we can give them to them. You know what I'm saying? Like here, y'all. Mm -hmm. Y'all need to be spoon fed. Yeah. Some, of, some people need to be spoon fed. Yeah, we don't mind know. doing that. We'll get yeah. the books. We'll connect mm -hmm. again. We'll start yeah, going. We, I mean, listen, I'm a, I'm a highlighter queen. Like my highlighters are over there. I'm a I highlighter know. queen. So I'm here for it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm good. Thank y'all. I appreciate it though. Right. This is um, amazing. Devonta, thank you so much for this. I didn't even think you were going to pick up the phone. I'm like, let's give it a try. He was on the way called like, Erica. was like, you're going to be like, on three-way, right? Him, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we good business. We good business. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's like spirit. Like you can't, you can't fake a spiritual connection. You can't. No. Like no. you can't fake that. And you feel it immediately. Like the energy is pure. The energy oh, yeah. is right. We on the same page. Yeah. We and might be up here over here. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's all love and light. That's it. Love and light. Love and light to the collective. 